Hello, welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to talk about immutability and what that means for Python. Uh, this comes up all the time on stream because I really like when things are immutable, and I'm going to talk about why. Uh, and this also comes up as an entry-level interview question fairly often, which is to answer like, what is immutability, and you know, in whatever language, like, what what things in Python are immutable. So I'm going to walk through the the built-in types in Python that are immutable, and talk to you about why I like to have things be immutable. We'll also talk about what it is to mean uh, to be immutable as an interface uh, because you can treat some not immutable things as immutable uh, depending on how you set them up and I'll show you some tricks using MyPy and typing to do that as well. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so the idea behind immutability uh, or mutability, I guess, because they're <laughs> opposites there. Mutability means that something can be changed. Uh, it can be modified in place is another way to say it. Uh, and immutable things uh, usually cannot be modified, or once they're created, they cannot be modified. Um, so there's some there's some technicalities there, like uh, tuples are a container type in Python. And in order to be able to build them, you would need to modify them. So there's, <laughs> there's a little bit of, of fiddliness there, uh, but Python makes tuples immutable after creation, so. There's kind of kind of some edge cases of that, but yes, the the idea behind immutability is once it is created, it is not modified. Or if you're talking about immutability in a scope, it means that it's not changed within that scope. Uh, in some languages, they might refer to this as const. Uh, well, <laughs> I guess the const that I'm talking about here is like C++ const. Uh, there's const in JavaScript, which actually which actually means a different thing. Uh, const in JavaScript means that it can't be reassigned, which is Different from mutability, it just means that the, the reference cannot be changed. Um, but yeah, let me show you some examples of this. Uh, for example, a tuple, which I mentioned before, is an immutable type in Python. Uh, so if we have a tuple that is, you know, three elements here, contains one, two, and three, we can, of course, access those. Uh, but if we try and reassign them, we get an error. We try and modify this object, uh, p0 equals two. Uh, you'll see that tuple object does not support item assignment. And you can't do append or uh, prepend or any sort of thing like that because a tuple is immutable. It cannot be changed after construction. Uh, now, of course, you can do some operations on it, and those will all produce new objects. So if we do a tuple addition here, we add the original tuple with a new tuple here, we will actually get a new tuple back and not modify the original object. And that's kind of the, the core bit of immutability. We actually used another immutable value here, which are or another immutable type here, which are integers. Integers in Python, uh, once they exist, they aren't modified in place. They create new integers as a result. So if we say like x equals one, of course I could do x equals two, uh, but this one is still there despite being reassigned here. This isn't actually modifying the object. This is reassigning the variable x. And I kind of did a video about this earlier on like references and uh, assignments and, and comparisons and, and stuff like that. Uh, so I'll try and remember to link that in the description. Uh, but integers are another immutable type in Python. Uh, the rest of them from built-in types are Booleans, which are actually themselves uh, <laughs> integers. <laughs> That's probably a topic for a whole nother video. Uh, strings. Strings cannot be modified uh, if you try and reassign a, a character to some other character. You'll see that it's not, not modifiable. Uh, bytes objects are also immutable, although there is a byte array, which is a mutable version of that. Um, so if you do bt0 equals g, well, byte string g, for instance. Uh, oh, right, it has to be an integer assignment. Invalid you know, literal oh, word. There we go. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't work with byte arrays very often, so that's <laughs> that's why even I make mistakes. Um, but I believe those are all the built-in immutable types. So strings, bytes, integers, oh, floats as well. And I guess by that extension, um, uh, complex numbers are also uh, immutable as well. I think that covers all of the built-in types that are immutable. There's probably some other screaming in the comments. No, you're wrong, Anthony. Um, but yeah, they, these are these are the immutable types. So tuple, float, tuple, all of the numerics, uh, bytes, and and strings. 
Now, uh, I talked earlier about why I really like immutables, or I introduced that. Uh, the reason that I really like immutable values is it makes it much easier to reason about your code when you can't have you know, unintended side effects in the middle of it. If you deal only with immutable values, you know, take in immutable values as parameters and return immutable values as return values, you know that your inputs are never gonna get modified and you know that your outputs are really easy to test because you basically just feed one thing out, one feed one thing in and get another thing out. You're not, you know, calling something and then trying to observe what happens as a result of it. You're just, you're basically just making sure that the inputs and outputs work, work together nicely. Uh, so it makes it a lot easier to reason about code the other thing that's nice about immutability is it makes it really easy to cache values. Uh, when things are immutable, you don't really have to worry about putting them into a cache because uh, if if uh, <laughs> if they get modified, they, they cannot be modified. But if they were modifiable, your cache would lose some of its integrity. It might lose its entire integrity uh, due to giving you know giving back a value that's not what you expect. Uh, like for instance, if we do uh, tools, let me make a very simple bad cache for example func tools dot lru cache uh let's just say max size equals 10. uh some func let's say it's x as an integer and it returns a list of integers that's that size i don't know something like that so we just do return x times x for instance Ugh. <laughs> i need to use capital list because i am in the interpreter and I am on an old version of Python that does not have lowercase list. Okay, anyway, here's a function now. Uh, we can call it, and it will return us back a value here. Uh, but because this value is mutable, if we were to assign it and then use it somewhere else, so we have list here, list.append 5, uh, I don't know, list.extend 1, 2, 3. We'll see that we've been able to modify this list. Now if I go back and call func1 again, you'll see that we no longer get our original value here. And this is because we've cached something that can be changed. And uh, you know, if you were to, instead of returning list, you were to return like a tuple of integers, uh, you wouldn't have this problem. You wouldn't be able to modify and poison your cache. Um, so that's another reason that immutable is kind of nice. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is how you can treat something immutably as an interface. So even if something is not immutable, such as like a dictionary. You know, a dictionary can be um, can be modified. You know, you can add add values to it, you can delete values from it, you can clear it, other stuff like that. Uh, but sometimes you can use typing to your advantage to force a thing to be treated as immutable. Uh, and one way to do that is using the immutable interfaces. Now there's a bunch of abstract base classes that are uh, hinted at in the typing module, and you know, if you're watching this really far in the future, uh, you'll probably import them from collections ABC instead, since they are the same as in there. Uh, the first example of those is mapping, or at least the one that I wanted to talk about here. Uh, mapping allows you to treat a dictionary, or treat a mutable mapping, as something that's read-only. So mapping only provides the interfaces for things which would uh, access a map, but not modify the map. Let's see, do they have the table of mappings in here? Maybe we have to go to collections ABC. Collections ABC, ABC standing for abstract base classes, uh, mapping, mapping. Okay, so a mapping is a collection. So it has all of the methods of collection, which is contains iter len, which has sized iterable container. Anyway, there's a big tree of like methods that it has. Uh, but you'll note here that it does not have any of the modifying values and those are the, or modifying functions and those are added by mutable mapping you know, get item set item del item those are the uh, bracket assignments or deletions um, it has iter and len but of course mapping also has iter and len uh, and it also gets pop pop item clear update and set default and these are implemented using these methods here so that's kind of how the abc works uh, but the, the important thing that I want to talk about here is you can make a function which takes in some sort of dictionary or some sort of mapping and say that it is a mapping, map int, I make that typo all the time. Let's say stir stir. Uh, and I don't know, returns, just say it returns none. From typing import mapping, 
And the nice thing about this is because I've used mapping and not mutable mapping, if I were to try and reassign a value in here uh, and run this through a type checker, install MyPy, and we run this through a type checker, uh, MyPy should complain here. You can see unsupported target for indexed assignment. So mapping stir stir is an immutable interface. Uh, so even if we were allowed to call this with a function, you know, if it would have succeeded at runtime, our baz, actually, let's just do this. We can actually see the modification. So even though this works at runtime, uh, we it modifies our, our dictionary here. We can force the type checker to tell us, uh, uh, uh you should you shouldn't have done that. Um, this is kind of similar to what you would do with like const in a in a language that supports well <laughs> in C plus plus because they're the constant JavaScript. Again, the constant JavaScript is not the constant C++. Uh, but that's probably for another video as well. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this is how you can force something to look immutable even if it's not. And then you can treat this as, uh, treat this in a context where you would have something be immutable. Uh, we can actually fix our, the example that I showed earlier with this cache here, uh, we, can, we can fix this by using typing as well such that this extend where append operation becomes a typing error. And the way you would do that is by using, instead of list as the return value here, you would use an immutable interface such as sequence. So now if we did that same, what was it? Uh, X dot append, or let's see, list equals func one, and then lst dot append five, etc. We'll get rid of this other example. Uh, if we did this now, uh, MyPy is going to, oops, too many peas. <laughs> peas, peas, peas! Uh, if, if we did this now, MyPy is going to tell us that, no, uh, let me actually import sequence. Uh, MyPy is going to tell us, no, you can't do that. So, although, wait, I'm pretty sure there's a bug in MyPy here, so we're going to actually see. Oh, okay, good, we do, we, it still works. Yeah, so you can see here that uh, you know, sequence int has no attribute append, and that's because we have, we have chosen an immutable type rather than the actual concrete type here. So if we had done list as we originally had, MyPy is going to be like, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Um, and so you can use your return value on caches, for instance, to force things to be immutable at typing time and prevent bugs. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess the summation of this whole video is I like immutability because it prevents bugs. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.